Hi felters and welcome. In this video we're going to go through the top 10 needle felting mistakes. If you're having a little bit of trouble with your needle felting, let's go through this list and see if we can help you. Let's get started. So first off is wrong wool and I don't really mean wrong wool, I just mean if you start with the tops or a roving that isn't carded, this is a carded wool, it will just take you longer to felt and sometimes it's harder to cover the joins. If you're a beginner, I really recommend a carded wool because it felts faster and it's easier to attach things. So most of my stuff is carded. All my horses are carded. I absolutely love it and I find it really easy to work with. Uh, the tops I use for the coats and for the manes and tails, but you can use it, but I prefer carded. Next is the wrong size needle. When you start a project, you want to start with a big needle, which is contradictory because it's a lower number. I've done a video on needles. And then when you finish and do the ending of a project, you want to start with uh, finish with a smaller needle. So the smaller needle here, if I started with it, would take ages. This is a bigger needle and it uh, felt a lot quicker at the start of a project. So check your needle sizes. Next up, breaking needles. You will break several needles, but if you're breaking needles all the time, there might be a reason. When you push your needle in, don't twist it, don't turn it, go in and out at the same angle. Don't drag your needle across the wool. If you go to drag a fine needle across wool, it will break. It will. This is actually bending the needle slightly, so fine needles will break. Um, so if you do need to do any sort of line drawing like I do with hoops, use a big thick needle. And if you're working with armature, so there's a wire inside this leg, if you use a fine needle, you're more likely to break it. So at the start of all your legs, use a big thick needle and then it will sort of bounce off the armature and it shouldn't break. I wouldn't say it won't happen, but it shouldn't break. It's less likely. And so when you come to finishing the leg, if you take the finer needle and do it at a 45 degree angle, you sort of get a bit more room out of it and a chance it will slide. If you see, it's already going quite far in anyway. So 45 degrees with the fine needle there. Give you a nice finish. Any broken needles, keep the tubes that they come in and then you can store them all in there and then throw them away nice and safely. So those plastic tubes are really good. Next up, not using a mat. You must use a mat because you're gonna hit the table underneath and you will blunt the end of the needles. You'll probably break them. This, all, this goes along with breaking needles, this one. So always use a mat. I've got lots of different videos on mats and tools. Next one, not rolling wool tight enough. At the beginning of a project, the first thing you do is you should roll your wool really tight because it will just speed everything up. So if I unroll this one, so I, that really loosely, it just would take you ages. See how tight I'm rolling it. And it gives you a lovely firm piece to start with and it won't take you long at all. So I take that little ball and then I start felting it and that really won't take me long. So make sure you're rolling things up, especially if you're doing legs without any armature. Roll them up really, really tightly. It'll save you so much time. And then the next one is not felting enough. So I felt a bit on one side here and then the other side is really under felted. If you don't felt something enough, it's going to fall apart. That's what will happen. It doesn't mean it's wrong. See, there we go. That hasn't been felted at all, really. And it's all bending over and it's just not felted enough. I do a video on whether you felt it enough, so look at that one. So make sure you keep going with your felting. Don't stop at one minute. I would say probably you're looking at three, four, five minutes, depending on what you're doing. You can do legs. That's a little tiny leg there, made it nice and firm. So you can, you don't have to have wire armature. You can felt them enough. Next up, starting with too much wool. If you grab a great big handful, it's gonna take you ages to get all into the center and to felt it properly. So take a smaller size, needle felt that, and then put layers on. Layers work so much better because you can judge how much you need then as well as you go along. So do that one and then put the layer around the outside. Number eight, 
stabbing your fingers this is going to happen you will stab your fingers sometimes but you shouldn't be doing it all the time now if you see i'm holding it there my fingernails have disappeared into the wool i cannot see my fingernails and if i can't see my fingers i will stab them so there you can see my fingernails and i'm less likely to hit them because i can see them sounds silly and always go down and away never needle felt towards your fingers and never felt whilst you're watching TV you can't do it <laughs> um, sometimes you can hold the wool with another needle and that works quite well because you definitely won't hurt yourself in most starter kits you're going to get um, these finger guards and they're fantastic when you first start I really recommend them but after a while you might not want to use them because you can't feel the wool but you definitely won't hurt yourself wearing them so they are fantastic some people have recommended thin gloves which is, is good is possible you can feel the wool a bit better but you can still felt through them it just wouldn't hurt as much and then another thing that's been recommended is plasters so they're a lot thinner but they still protect your fingers so you're plastering up before you hurt yourself so those are some options for you but just make sure you can see your fingers if you see here I'll put my finger in it fingernail right into the wool again and you'll see how far in your fingers can go without you realizing so there I am holding it quite firmly all of my fingernail was in the wool and if you can't see it you don't know when you're gonna hit it and another thing please don't stab in the air because it just doesn't work there's nothing firm for the wool to about to uh, resist against so don't do felting in the air always do it on a mat and then you can do it nice and fast and you'll get a really nice firm piece. Definitely don't hold it in the palm of your hand. The next one, running before you can walk. It's just try and get some basics um, first. So this sheep is so easy. He's got no eyes, no mouth, um, just simple ears, simple body and legs. Whereas this one, you'd have to do the face, you have to do the ears a bit better. He's got wire armature in his leg. So it's a bit more complex. I don't mean don't try anything, but just try a few things first. And this one is a full white armature. It's got a nice tail, quite a few details on his face. So I wouldn't run straight into that. So just do a nice, simple beginner project first, maybe one or two before you try and take on something maybe a bit too big. Even this ladybird is really simple. It's good for practicing accuracy with the dots little clip underneath so really good little beginner project lastly <laughs> I think you can tell oh, eyeing up my little felty cow there pets people don't always know this straight away but this is wool and it actually smells of wool and it has lanin lanin in it and that is just so appealing to pets keep your felted items away from your pets I promise you cats and dogs they love it so I hope that has helped. I have got lots of other videos on needle felting techniques, lots of tutorials, so please do have a look through my channel. Do subscribe to see all the latest videos and thank you for watching and see you again soon.